Hey guys, this is the mind of Lilith and thank you for joining me today for this very quick message. So I was working on um, my synastry reading for Neo and his wife, Crystal. And you know, something came up on my timeline. There were some women who were uh, talking about how women are going to die alone because we have to reduce our standards and we want too much and so on. And a lot of men are now like, they're, they're, they're giving credit to Kevin Samuels for shifting the narrative about male and female partnerships in this country. What really annoys me about this conversation, and this is not to uh, rant or anything or talk about anyone in particular, because there's too many people to talk about in particular. I'm addressing this particular topic, but I'm not speaking about anyone specifically, okay? Because I don't watch enough of this content to speak about anyone specifically. But I will say that from the male side and the women's side, right? Um, both sides are like talking about how much they don't need each other, how better off they are being independent and just taking care of themselves and just spending time with themselves and building themselves up. And then at the same time, they're trying to convince the opposite gender of how bad it will be to be single. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. If you are so happy being single, why are you trying to convince other people of the opposite gender, men and women, of what they should do to be a good partner to somebody else, right? So these people in the menosphere spaces, spaces um, even like the women who are now taking up Kevin Samuel's points because of his popularity um, and this, you know, the impact he's had on the con on the culture, nobody is talking about the fact that both sides are telling each other that we're all worthless. Like according to the men, most women are worthless unless they submit to them. According to the women, most men are worthless unless they submit to them. So if these people are inherently worthless, why are you so concerned? Why are these men and women on these platforms so concerned with trying to convince the opposite gender how not to be worthless for them, right? How can you be useful to me? Even though my life is so great without you, because I have, you know, time and money and no kids. This is men and women saying this and no stress and no cheating and no diseases. But if you don't meet these standards, you're going to die alone. Listen, there are more women than men, okay? A lot of us are going to die alone inevitably. That's just the way that it is. You can see this in people's astrology charts, no matter who they get married to, how many children they have, how much money they have, there is a possibility that you're going to die alone. You know, there was a documentary a few years ago about this Indian village of old widows, right? And essentially in Indian culture, um, a bride price is paid so that the bride can now become property of her husband's family. So the woman leaves her natural born family to basically take care of her husband's family, the children, the in-laws, everything. Once that man dies, right? Once the husband dies and the children get married off to other families away from their mother, these women are essentially destitute and they're living together in these remote villages with no nothing and they got married. Marriage is not the end all be all and being single is not the end all be all either. The problem that I have in the, with these conversations is the fact that there isn't enough nuance provided about what impact the culture has on our dating selections, okay? In black American culture, right? Black women and black men are at odds with each other because we have different ideas of what success and integration and assimilation and Americanism actually is. So at the civil rights, the black community was at some sort of crossroads. Do we want social integration or do we want economic integration? Social integration was basically the ability to be around white folks without getting lynched, right? Going to white schools, being in white, living in white neighborhoods, uh, getting hired at white institutions, um, you know, basically social integration, being able to interact with white folks socially, 
without prejudice or murder or terror or fear or whatever, right? This is a very bare bones explanation. Then we have economic integration. Black people wanting to shop and spend their monies at white institutions, okay? Wanting to work at white companies, wanting to spend the black dollar on white businesses. A lot of us fought for the right to do that. We wanted to spend our money wherever we wanted to spend it. Come hell or high water, okay? So we got the economic integration and we got the social integration. Kinda, sorta, right? Because black women are still black women. By and large, most of us are still at the very bottom of the socio-cultural, socio-economic global totem pole, right? Because we have to deal with race and gender. Black men, even though they've dealt with racism as well, they have power when it comes to social integration. Because in a socially integrated society, you're still a man. And there's still going to be women catering to you because of your masculinity and your maleness. So that's a domain that you can control. That's why, in my opinion, a lot of black men are um, advocated more for social integration than for economic integration. Because the white man is not going to give up his coins that easily. He'll give up his woman before he gives up his coins. Because if his coins gives him access to whatever woman he wants anyway. So... Black women, in my opinion, valued economic integration more than social integration because even in a socially integrated society, black women have still have low social power because of our complexions, because of our race, because of our gender, right? Because of our phenotype. Kevin Samuel said that black women are on the opposite uh, side of the of the beauty spectrum, right? So we don't look like the ideal woman. It doesn't matter how much money we have. It doesn't matter how smart we are. Essentially, those things are unimportant to men who breed for status, who breed for prestige, who want their children to look like preferences for other men. Nick Cannon talked about white women being status symbols. And, you know, Cynthia G always talks about black men giving birth to their preferences because they want their children to be desirable to other men, right? Who have preferences too. And preferences is a metaphor for, you know, biracial, Latin American, non-black, loose hair textured black women, okay? That's a general term, okay? So this, so black women cannot become what they're not. We can't be white. We, you know, a lot of us are born with a certain phenotype. We're still black women. We still have brown skin. We still have kinky hair. We still are going to be at the mercy of the society that we're living in uh, based on social constru cultural constructs of beauty and value associated with beauty, okay? Black women are gorgeous. They're beautiful. But like I said, by and large, a lot of black men have been brainwashed to think that a black woman is not a preference, okay? Unless she's mixed or biracial, fine. So because of this situation, black women have now become heavily invested in attaining higher education, college degrees, certifications, uh, PhDs, essentially corporate titles, right? That give us the power that our race and our gender cannot. This is why I believe so many black women are married to their jobs. Um, we're so proud of our positions. We wear that as a badge of honor to say, see, look at me, I'm a PhD, I'm a doctor. You have no choice but to respect me now because guess what? You wasn't gonna respect me because of my gender or my race, but now I'm your boss. Now I earn more money than you. Now I don't need you to take care of me because I can take care of myself. I don't have to grovel and beg like a slave because you don't see me as a preference. So now I can live the lifestyle that I believe I deserve, not because of any sort of gender privilege or, uh, or racial privilege that black women do not have. Because in this country, the opposite of a black woman is a white woman, right? White woman is at the very top of the patriarchy. She is the queen mother goddess of the patriarchy. She created the patriarchy. If we want to keep it 100. No, I can't even say that. 
She is maintaining the patriarchy. Black men created the patriarchy. Okay. So white women who are the opposite of black women, phenotypically by and large, right? Uh, they're considered to be the standard bearers of beauty and femininity and class, all of which are metrics that men use to evaluate the worth or the value of a woman in society, right? So if black women are the opposite of white women, right? And white women are class, black women are not class, right? If white women are beautiful, black women are not beautiful unless they're drop dead gorgeous. If white women have high social value, then black women have low social value. So even in a socially integrated society, black women still aren't going to be at the socioeconomic and sociocultural totem pole. So what did we do to compensate? We got degrees, we got money, because we could not wait for men who didn't see us as a preference or a status symbol to say, you know what? I'm going to treat these black women with respect and love, and I'm going to work hard for these black women. I'm going to fight for a community that's safe and clean and wholesome and productive for our women. Because according to a lot of black men, black women are not worth that. They're not worth that effort. So black women said, since I'm not worth the effort to any freaking body, let me get my PhD. Let me get my JD. Let me become an RN. Let me become a policy analyst. I'm going to wear this status symbol, right, of this job, this corporate title, okay, as a badge of honor and respect to say, you know what? I have earned the right to be respected in this society. I have spent 20 years of my life in school. I don't want to say 20 years. I, was, I spent 16, 17 years of my life going to school in order to be validated by a system that says that I'm not valuable unless I'm making money or I meet a certain beauty standard, right? And like I said, black women are black women. So even if we're gorgeous, there's still an asterisk next to our beauty. You're pretty for a black girl, that kind of shit, right? You're only pretty for a black girl if you have a certain hair texture or your booty is this big or you have a certain phenotype. A dumb comedian said that. Um, I think it was Hannibal Burris. A dumb black comedian was like, I want a black woman with white women features, right? As if white women own a specific phenotype and they do not, okay? But anyway, this is, a, the, you know, in Hollywood, that's a very common notion, right? It's a very common expectation. I'm going to have sex with the black girls who don't look like my preference and I'm going to marry my preference. I'm going to marry my Aniko, okay? I'm going to marry my uh, Mariah Carey, okay? I'm going to marry this preference woman, right? And if a black woman gets married to a black man, she has to be a superwoman in a sense, right? If she doesn't fit a specific phenotype. I'm not talking about every single black man and every single black woman. I'm talking about the general consensus because there are black men who love dark-skinned black women and who love, you know, black women who do not fit a certain standard of beauty, okay? That's not to say that, you know, all black men have preference issues, no. But what I am saying is that by and large, collectively, the message that black women receive from the media, from the culture, from their communities is that you have no value unless you make your own value. You have to become valuable to yourself before we treat you with any sort of respect. So a black woman is not going to inherit any wealth from anybody. Daddy's not in the house. So what can she do? The only thing she can do besides bust somebody upside the head and demand respect is to go to school, get her education, and then get her six-figure job living in a wealthy enclave away from men who don't consider her as a preference, okay? Now, this goes back into my original point about these relationship commenters and gurus talking about, you know, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, if you don't compromise on this, if you don't compromise on that, you'll be single. Yes, there are some women who are ridiculous with their standards. Yes, there are, it is what it is. But by and large, a lot of these content creators are not asking the right questions. Why is there such a dissonance between what black women want and what black men want, right? Black men want a certain type of black woman who is reminiscent of a Felicia Rashad, who is beautiful and classy and elegant, right? Who pays 50% of the bills, who doesn't expect the man to take care of all the bills, who's subservient and this and that and that and the third, right? 
And a lot of black women want a man who's a provider, okay? Someone who has the money to take care of her so that she doesn't have to wear the brunt of being a black woman with low social power on her shoulders, okay? I don't disagree with 50-50 partnerships. I don't disagree with 100 in zero partnerships where the wife stays at home. I don't disagree with any sort of arrangement that is not abusive and that mutually benefits both parties. So unless you're a criminal or hurting children, there's no wrong way to be happy in your relationship. Okay, that is my motto. Okay, that's my philosophy. Do what you gotta do to be happy for yourself. But my concern is that these relationship gurus are always talking about how much they don't need the other gender while at the same time trying to get the other gender to do what they want in order to be valuable to them. Even though men ain't shit, and even though women ain't shit, if you don't die alone, then you gotta do this. You gotta meet these standards and this criteria. For what? For somebody you said that wasn't worth anything or worth changing for, right? The first thing the black community needs to do is to get on the same page about what it wants as a culture and a community going forward. What is the purpose of us being in this country? What is the purpose of this relationship? What are we doing this for? Are we just doing this to have fun? Are we doing this to build a family, a foundation? Why are we together? What is the goal? And the culture should be enforcing or reinforcing those standards, right? Whatever criteria we have for partnerships, the culture should enforce that. If you have a culture of promiscuity, of drug addiction, of no discipline, of delusion, right? Of selfishness then your relationships are going to reflect that, okay? If you think that your Americanism and your integration within a sick society is worth more than your relationships, then you're going to end up with American-style relationships, okay? McDonald's relationships, fast food relationships, okay? The shit only takes good for 15 minutes. And then when you finish eating it, you feel sick for the rest of the day. You feel sluggish and tired and weak. And after a few years, you get inflammation. Your body breaks down, okay? Because it's not healthy food, it's fast food. So if your culture is not conducive to building long-term, strong, productive partnerships, then guess what? More than likely, your relationships are going to be trash. They're going to be trash because the culture will have an influence on how you perceive your partner, okay? So because Americans have been spoiled, by and large, in a sense, okay, by first world country standards of living in a sense, right? You can find a job when you want to by and large, okay? You have access to decent housing, whether you're working or not, right? You have access to education, whether you pay for it or not. Because Americans in general have been used to a standard of living that says, you know what? Even if I fuck up, I can still have a decent kind of life. I'm still not going to be living in Guatemala or Mexico or in third world countries where there's no resources, I can still live a decent life here in the United States. I really don't have to pour into my relationships. I don't really have to work things out with my partner because I can always find somebody better, right? Just like I find a new job, just like I can move into a new community once my old community gets fucked up, right? You know, I can find a new man by tomorrow. I can find a new woman by tomorrow, right? This is the American way. This is collective narcissism. So we have cultural narcissism, but then we expect to have functional, healthy relationships that endure over time. That's not going to happen. So stop giving suggestions about, you need to do this to be happy. You need to do that to be happy. Figure out what the value systems of the people in the relationship are first, and then you can say whether or not those value systems are in alignment with the outcomes that they're looking for, right? But we also have to acknowledge that our value systems have been cultivated by the culture that we live in, by the society that we live in. I talked about the race dynamic and the gender dynamic and working and money and the value of money and how it gives you high social value regardless of what race you are, regardless of how you look, right? You know, people used to make jokes about Oprah's looks and how she looks like whatever. She's not a beauty model or beauty queen and she's had to deal with this issue her whole life. But guess what? Now she's Oprah. So she gets respect regardless. She's going to get respect regardless. She can live where she wants to live. She doesn't have to be poor and groveling and disrespected because of her appearance. This is why a lot of women cleave onto their 
corporate jobs. Not because they're unattractive per se, because there are lots of gorgeous black women who are C-level executives at large companies. That's not the issue. The problem is that black women learn at a young age that we have no protection and no provision unless we give it to ourselves. Not all black women. There are some black women who have providers and protectors in their lives, who are their fathers, who are uncles and brothers. Eh, that's not very common, but it happens. Okay, there are plenty of stories of married women being married to bums. So having a father in your life doesn't guarantee you a life of happiness and freedom and, you know, economic prosperity. No. Okay, the man has to want to do that. So even if he gets a woman to marry him, to submit to him, if he ain't shit, he ain't going to be shit whether he's married or not. Because that's his value system. His value system is, I don't love myself, so therefore I am not worthy of love. And that means that I cannot give love to my wife or my children. So me providing and protecting for them is not going to happen because I don't feel like I have the capacity to do that. Or I don't love my wife and my children or my children to want to provide a life for them. There are many different reasons for this. There's mental health issues. There's a lot of problems in the black community. So having a husband or a wife is not the end all be all in this situation. Okay. So just to wrap it up. Yes, it is important that people have partners in life, but it's not the most important thing in life. We learn from relationships, but being single and dying alone is not the end of the world because guess what? Most of us outlive our partners. A lot of old black women and old black men end up in nursing homes with no one to care for them because their children are taking care of their own families and their own lives, okay? I have read many complaints from people on Quora.com and on Reddit.com complaining about the fact that they gave all their life to their children and their children don't even visit them in their old age. They're just waiting for them to die for the insurance policy, okay? So getting married... And having a lifelong partner is not the end all be all because like I said, you're going to die alone anyway. Like Kevin Samuels died alone, right? A lot of people die alone. There's nothing wrong with dying alone. But there is something wrong with shaming people that you say are worthless <laughs> into wanting to be with you. Otherwise, they're going to miss out on the opportunity to be with someone who looks down on them and deems them worthless unless they're doing what they want. So you're only valuable to me if you're doing what I want you to do. But like I said, there are some really ridiculous women and men in relationships, right? There are people who have unrealistic expectations for partners. There are some people who have great partners that they do not appreciate because they have issues within themselves. Even if you have the perfect partner, if you ain't shit, it won't be enough. When I do synastry readings for my clients, right, I always include a natal chart analysis, a small synopsis of a natal chart analysis um, so that the client can understand that even though you may have great energy together, this does not mean that your partner has a good relationship with themselves or that you have a good relationship with yourself because there are plenty of people who make great, who meet great partners who want to do everything for them, but they sabotage those relationships because of their own demons. Okay, so it's not as simple as you got to lower your standards. You got to look this way. You got to look that way, right? There is a certain reason why a lot of these people don't want to lower their standards for their partner because the standards are really high because they're afraid of getting hurt. And a lot of them feel like they don't deserve love anyway. So let me keep my standards to the point where nobody can come in and fuck up my life, right? Because I don't feel like I'll have control of my emotions once I get emotionally attached to somebody because I don't value myself. Another reason is a lot of people out here ain't shit. So the standards need to be high because guess what? The people who used to have low standards for partners, they were accepting and loving and accommodating and forgiving. They got shitted on. It's not a one size fits all solution. If you want to do this, then do that. We have to attack this issue simultaneously on multiple fronts because our communities were not destroyed one brick at a time. The bricks were all destroyed at once, okay? The house was blown up, okay? We had drugs flown into the communities. The jobs were taken out the same time. Integration happened exactly. We got hit by the government, you know, from all sides, right? 
We got the social integration, which, you know, took money out of the black community in a sense. Social economic integration, I'm sorry. That took money out of the black community. The social integration had us basically running away from our communities, living in, in wealthy white enclaves and not fixing the problems in our communities at all, right? Then we have the issue of the drugs and the guns and the prostitution and, you know, the domestic violence. All these issues are compounded. You cannot address them one at a time. This has to be addressed collectively. The culture has to be addressed. We have to evaluate ourselves individually. We have to look at our family dynamics. We have to unlearn some of the social programming and the social engineering that we've experienced. Because we've been attacked in this country for so long, we have to deal with mental health issues, substance abuse issues, domestic violence issues, um, emotional, psychological issues because of sexual abuse and neglect. There are so many compounding issues that we have to address simultaneously that to say, oh, you got to do this to get the right partner is not going to solve this problem. It's not. It's good for the algorithm, right? It's good for people looking for a quick fix. But guess what? Just like these homeless people are encroaching on middle class black communities because we did not clean up our house 40, 50, 60 years ago. We cannot escape from this problem of having a fucked up culture that supports destructive, dysfunctional, abusive relationships. And I'm gonna leave it there for now. I look forward to reading your feedback. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will speak to you soon.